Steve home. Yeah, Steve. Steve, it's Lenny. Yeah. From the body shop? Yeah. How you doing? Good. I'd like to give a little update on the car situation. Okay. All right. Okay. We finished the pinstriping, and we're just completing the sunroof right now. And uh, by tomorrow, we should be able to get on to the, uh, the brakes. I got a Pontiac 6000. Yeah. And I had a transmission in there. What are you saying? Hold uh, on a how minute. How come you're doing pinstriping? <laughs> Didn't you want pinstriping? Heck no. I have an order here for pinstriping, also a new sunroof, and a uh, brake job. Well, that ain't me. What was your car again? I have a Pontiac 6000. 1982, the transmission went out. Well, hold on a minute, man. You know what? What? We had a little mix-up here. I think we just put a sunroof in your car. You didn't want one? Are you kidding? No. What can I say? <laughs> I can say I'm not paying for it. But I swore you came in and said, give me a sunroof and a pinstripe and a brake job. <laughs> my brakes are good, and I don't want pinstripe, and then, no, I didn't have a sunroof. My transmission is shot. Well, that's where the paperwork got screwed up. Uh, well, that wasn't me that uh, made the mistake. Yeah, but you can't expect me to give this to you for free. <laughs> I didn't ask you to do it. Yeah, but we did it. Yeah, and I got a transmission that's still under warranty. I tell you what, you shoot me 700 bucks, we'll, we'll do the transmission and call it even. <laughs> I don't think so. The, the transmission is free, you know? Now, how am I going to go to my boss, say that I put a sunroof in someone's car that didn't want it? Well, I don't know how you're going to do that. Uh, I didn't request that. That's not... That's not under my, uh... I'm not paying for that if, it, if that's uh, what you did. You know, I'll, I'll say thank you for the sunroof, but, uh, that's not what I required or requested. Well, look, I gotta put food on the table, Steve. You know, I can't just do this for free. Uh-huh. We gotta work out something here. Well, don't you, uh, have your guy call me tomorrow, your boss? I don't want to tell my boss. Can't we just settle this? Uh, no. I'd rather talk to him. What's his name? Wilbur. No, it's not Wilbur. No? <laughs> Chuck? Who am I talking to? How about Bob? <laughs> no. Steve? Keep guessing. Oh, you're Steve. I'm Steve. How about John Lastman? John Lastman? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you're putting me on. Yeah, we are. <laughs> well, thanks for the sunroof. Well, you ain't got no sunroof, man. <laughs> uh, it's the KQ call of the day. Oh, God. And Bob said I, you are. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, you're a good sport, and uh, good luck on the on the transmission and the sunroof. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah, good guess, Lastman. His name is Wilbur. <laughs> a lot of guys named Wilbur these days, okay? <laughs> I had an uncle. Hello? Hello, Ted? Yes. This is William Redding calling. I work in the complaint department here. Yeah. I'm doing a few follow-up calls on you, sir. I had a few complaints stemming from your job. First of all, on the 13th of last month, you sold a defective pair of high heel shoes to a Miss Everlasting. Okay. Uh, apparently, when she returned them, she says you, how should I put it, flipped her the bird? She what? She claims that you flipped her the bird. <laughs> okay. Okay? Yeah. No, that's not okay. We treat our customers with respect here. Well, I never did that. You're denying this? Yep. Complaint number two. On the 22nd, you sold a pair of shoes to Mr. Stevenson. He claims that one was size nine and a half, one was size eight and a half. When he returned them, you suggested he get his eyes examined. What was that noise you just made? No, I was just, one, I was just, I was just doing that. This isn't a game. Well, why don't you come down and see me in the shoe department? Well, why don't you just relax a minute, Ted? I'm not going to go running around this damn mall. Well, we're going to have to have you come down and then fill out a whole bunch of reports stemming from these complaints. Fill out reports? I never heard anything like that. Look, buddy, we get a complaint on you. The only way we can rectify it is if you come down, sign affidavits swearing you didn't do it, and then maybe take a few lie detector courses, and then also, maybe electroshock therapy wouldn't hurt. Electroshock therapy? Yes. Who is this calling? 
This is Mr. Huntsmiller. I work in the complaint department of this corporation. The I complaint. don't... complaint? Yes. Well, I don't know. Why don't you talk to my boss? I don't want your boss, Ted. We want you. Well, why don't you come and see me? Ted, this is the last time. We want you downtown now. Downtown now. This guy says he's in the complaint thing downtown. Hello. Hello, who is this? This is Kim. Hello, Kim? Yes. Yes, keep a straight face. It's the call of the day here. Hi. Okay. So, uh, why don't you just say, yeah, yeah, lady did come in and complain. Yeah, yeah, lady did come in and complain. Do you really have to give him electroshock therapy? Do you really have to give him electroshock therapy? Yes. Now give him back the phone. Okay. Hello. Okay, what time are you going to be down here, Ted? I can't be down here tonight. I'm sorry. You've got to make it down here. We only have the electroshock machine for another day. No, I can't do electric shock tonight. Yes, you can, and you will. If we have to come and get you, you will. Oh, I really can't tonight. I'm sorry. You have your lobotomy tonight, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're taking your job serious, Ted. Oh, I'm taking my job more than serious, sir. I, I can look at some figures here that I'm up there and stuff. And I think I'm taking you quite serious after five months. Kim's a good employee. He is. But he thinks you're a good guy, too. He does, huh? Yeah, in fact, he set you up for the KQ call of the day. Oh, he what? Kim? Oh, my God. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Oh, my God. Oh, no. You're kidding me. Would you like to say anything to Kim? <laughs> I'm blushing right now. I don't know what to say. I, well, I'd like to say I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> kill him, kill him. He's shaking my head right now. I'm shaking right now. <laughs> oh my God, you did, you did a good job. Oh man, oh, my heart's beating. I never did any of those things. Come on now. I didn't, I didn't do one of those things. Oh, well, you're a great, great sport. Thank you very much. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Hello? Mike, how are you? I'm all right. Who's this? This is Sergeant Feb. Yes? Mike, listen carefully, okay? Yes. Is there anyone else on the line right now? No, there isn't. Are you sure? I'm sure. You're not currently serving any duties, are you? Uh, no, I'm not. What's your military background, Mike? I'm a 12 Bravo, and uh, I just got back from training mm -hmm. in AIT. Okay. You're sure there's no one else on the line right now? Yes, I'm sure. I need you to write down a few things here. I'm getting a pen. Okay. Okay. We have a code 9 or 9 or 271 going on in Honduras right now. Some sort of undercover civil war has broken out. Yes. And I think we're going to have to shoot you over there real quick, take care of some things. Okay. I need you to report to Fort Cambridge, Mississippi, as of 1,400 hours Wednesday. Okay. And how should I go about getting there? Should I go to my unit? Report to your unit as of 1,800 hours tomorrow. Will this be a problem? No, it will not. Okay, now here's what I want you to bring. Okay. Code 7172. Code 9 or 9 or 37. And a code 71353. You sure there's no one else on the line right now? I'm positive. This is the only phone in our home. Okay. Do you have your code book there? My code book? Your code book? No, I don't have a code book. You don't have a code book on you? No, I don't. Damn. I'll make sure you get one. Okay. How about a code ring? Dakota ring? No, I don't have one. You don't have a secret Dakota ring? No, I don't. I thought all good soldiers had secret Dakota rings. No, I don't. You don't have one on you? Do you understand the importance of this mission? Yes. Yes, I do. There'll be no problem with you showing up on time, right, son? No, there will not. Do you have any, uh, any problem with this? 
No. Okay, now you can't tell anybody about this. If word of this gets out to the U.S. American public, we could be looking at some pretty, pretty hectic stuff going on here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you can't tell your friends and you can't tell your family. How are you going to explain your disappearance? I could just say I'm going to California. With an aching in my heart. Okay. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. Sounds like I hear the Allman Brothers in the background there, son. Mm-hmm. Is that an album? No, it's not. It's the uh, stereo. Oh. What station? KQ. Really? Great station. Mm-hmm. Great station. Got one more code for you to decipher there. Okay, I'm just writing these down, and I have no idea what they mean, so... You don't have a secret Dakota ring? No. Okay, the code is C-A-L-L-O-V-T-H-E-D-A-Y. Does that mean anything to you, son? C-A-L-L-T-H-E-D-A-Y-O-S-D-A... What? Call of the day. Does that mean anything to you? Well, what the hell is this? <laughs> I mean, you got me going crazy, man. I just signed up for the Army. You can relax. Jeff set you up. Thought it'd be a great joke. Thanks, Jeff. This is KQ. I know. <laughs> oh, sweet. Man. You had me going. You had me going. Except for as soon as you said secret decoder ring and all this, oh, I knew it was kind of a setup. All right, thanks a lot, man, uh, for not making this real. Jeez. <laughs> that, I was dying. I was shaking my boots. <laughs> well, you can relax now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.